or the stories y'all tell that are so inconsistent. Well, you know, when the slaves got married, you know, they didn't want the slaves to be married, so they started doing this. Hold on, but if you own property, you don't have a right to get married anyway. Oh, man, you know what? You know, this slave bought himself out of slavery. Hold on, how did he earn an income? If he owned chattel property, how do he earn income? Well, you know, he worked on the side that, you know, we had a side job. You know, I mean, y'all y'all all over the board. And, and the smaller you are, the more educated you are, the stupider you sound when you talk. I don't want y'all representing me. We need parallel communities. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's going to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. One of the things we're going to have to talk about sooner or later as black Americans is the lack of proper representation in the mainstream. Now, what I mean by that is this. If we are to be honest, how many politicians actually speak for the average black American? How many black politicians speak for the black average black American? Hardly any. How many black academics, professionals that's, that you see on the mainstream media that, that be guests on the, in the mainstream media or the mainstream media host themselves, how many of them actually share any viewpoints of the average black American. Very few of any. Even when you look at people like Dr. Eric Dyson and L. Sharpton, do they actually represent the thinking of the average common black American? No, they do not. Even your more radical figures like Dr. Umar Johnson, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, Dr. Claude Anderson, you know, Reza Islam, you know, Dr. Da, 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 Dr. Wesley Muhammad, you know, so all these kinds of figures, right? Even among them, how many of them actually represent the thinking, the feelings, the sentiments, the actual sentiments of the average black American person? And that brings me to my point. Now HBO is about to push out the 1619 Project, right? Not HBO, um, Hulu, right? Based on, you know, Hannah Nicole uh, Jones, whatever her name is, Nicole, Nicole, Nicole Je Hannah Jones, whatever her name is, right? So sell out ass chick, man, that's always pushing slave talk. You know, always these, always these academics, these academics speak for us. Whatever they got going on in their personal world, it somehow becomes all of our issues. We never cared about no crazy stuff like 1619 projects or critical race theory. This is not something that the average black American won't. This is something that they conjure up. And, and for some reason, it becomes all of our cross to bear. I don't want to bear these crosses no more. I don't want to sit here and have to be defending myself among strangers because some black politician said something that I was completely unaware of or because some black so-called leader says something that I'm completely unaware of. These people do not speak for all of us. In fact, they don't even speak for most of us. You remember a few years ago, man, Cornell West, Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Um, Dr. Eric Dyson got into a little beef and Dr. Dyson told him, man, look, man, you are basically relevant, bro. You know, I don't know who you think you are, but you're basically irrelevant. But the truth is, Dr. Eric Dyson, you irrelevant too. You come from the same elitist factory that, 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 that Dr. Cornell West came from. All y'all come from the same factory. Y'all come out of these universities, stamped with approval of the white man, and then y'all come back to the black community to act, to act like y'all so anti-white man, when your whole world was, is created based on his education. Your whole world view is formulated based on what he told you. But you come back to us and you want to speak for us when you have, you've been indoctrinated under the mindset of the white man. I don't want this no more. The, it's time for us to split. Look, all y'all dudes want to keep claiming y'all from Africa and African slaves and stuff. I get tired of telling y'all, no, you're not. There's a 99% chance that your people were indigenous Americans. 
and the, and the more black Americans started really digging into our indigenous history, the more you start having black scholars coming up with critical race theory, the 1619 project. Now they start to, all of a sudden, they start to call these so-called Native Americans indigenous people. They have never been called indigenous because they're not indigenous to the Americas. Everybody know they're not indigenous to the Americas. So all of a sudden, as we start claiming our indigenous identity, our leaders, our scholars, our academics, they started using the word indigenous and started applying it to others to others when we never called them indigenous no more than we ever called ourselves african americans that's something that 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 uh 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 what's his name um the rainbow coalition jesse jackson that's something he came up with so he come up with a label and now we all got a better cross of something that this man said when we never called ourselves African-Americans. Who is he to change our identity, to, to just call us something? And see, that's the problem y'all don't understand that most names and labels are given to people by outsiders. It's never what people call themselves. So any name we are called by is not the name we ever called ourselves. They can say what they want, but a tree by any other name is still a tree. A thing by any other name is still a thing. You could call us what we want, but we are still the people that were in the Americas and West Indies before the Europeans arrived. We still those people. The, the, the so-called black community can really break off into thirds. And that's what we need to do. We need to have parallel communities. We need to split this thing, man. Because I'm tired of arguing with blacks about our identity. Why well, I got to argue with my own brothers and sisters that we didn't come here slaves? Why the hell y'all want to be slaves so bad? Oh, man, you just want to be something you're not. Oh, man, you got to be proud of your heritage. Well, I, that's not my heritage, bro. But, well, I mean, it's not your heritage either, more than likely, man. But why in the hell y'all want to embrace that so eagerly without no proof? Oh, man, when they found proof, where they found proof at? They told you they found proof. You believe this man, then you won't come back to me telling to be pro-black, but everything you believe is given to you by those people. You will argue with me and get mad at me and want to fight with me physically behind something that they told you to believe in, but you never question them. This is straight out of the Bible. When Moses went to his people and tried to tell them, get ready this so we can move, they say, well, who are you to tell us what to do? And Moses replied, well, golly, y'all never asked Pharaoh nothing. Y'all never questioned your so-called slave master, but you questioned a brother that's trying to free your mind up. You grill me, ask me a thousand questions. Even if I can answer them all, and I can, you don't want to accept my answer. But they can just tell you something with no evidence, no proof, no nothing, just tell you something, and you ride with that to your grave. I don't want y'all representing me. I don't want them kind of people representing me. I don't want these Harvard grads, these, these Ivy League school graduates representing me. I don't want these fake politicians representing me. I don't want these fake religious leaders, Farrakhan included, representing me. And it's time for somebody to stand up and say, man, that the black community is not only not a monolith, but we are not the same people. They, they say they from Africa. Just like one of these brothers that have a boxing channel told me, we are not kin. I said, man, we all, we, we all brothers, you know. He told me we are not brothers. I told you I am a descendant of slaves. You say you not, so we not brothers. Well, if you feel that way, Okun do, Okun ass, if you, that's the way you feel, cool. He thought he said something hurt me, but you the one look like a fool. Sitting here lying on your great grandmother just so you could justify claiming that your family come from slaves. You look like the fool, not me. We put you right, bruh. You right. You know what? Thank you for saying that. We are not brothers. It's time for this thing to split. I don't want y'all considering me to be one of y'all. If we are not on the same page, if we don't want the same things out of life, we are not the same. Period. If you believe you from Africa, your descendants are from Africa, mine's are from the Americas, right? And the West Indies. I know where mine's from. Mine's from the Americas and West Indies. That's why I had this thing behind me. Aborigine nation of the Americas and West Indies. That, that's what that means. And Tawi. Aborigine nation of the Americas and West Indies. So if you feel your people from Africa, then you are not part of Antawi. Simple. I don't need to argue with you. We don't need to have beef. 
we don't need to debate. If your people are descendants of African slaves, cool. Mines or not. So I'm in town. You are African. I don't want you speaking for me. Because your concerns, things like reparations, your concerns are not my concerns. What you really need to do is go back to Africa. You and all you Pan-Africanists need to leave the Americas. Leave. What are you here for? What's your reason for being here? If you so proudly African, go back to Africa. I'm tired of being misrepresented. I'm tired of being embarrassed every time some, some black person say something stupid in the media. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere I go, white folks look at me, you know, that the white folks I talk to, they, they scared to ask questions, but they kind of want to know what I think about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, oh man, I'm tired of this here. I'm tired of this. When it, when, when, when it, when it should be a collective, we don't want to see it as a collective. And when it shouldn't be a collective, like our ancestry, we want to make that a collective and we'll fight with each other and argue with each other and all kinds of stuff. You know, force each other to, to, to accept things. So now I got to accept that the 1619 project that Hulu about the show, I got to accept like that's part of what's my culture. Like that's something I need to watch. Y'all found out that Roots was a completely fabricated story. Had no historical facts in it at all. All this stuff was lies. And the things in it that, that, that you should be aware of are the stories y'all tell that are so inconsistent. Well, you know, when the slaves got married, they didn't want the slaves to be married, so they started doing this. Hold on, but if you own property, you don't have a right to get married anyway. Oh, man, you know, well, you know this slave bought himself out of slavery. Hold on, how did he earn an income? If he owned chattel property, how do he earn income? Well, you know, he worked on the side that, you know, we had a side job. You know what I mean? Y'all all over the board. And, and the smarter you are, the more educated you are, the stupider you sound when you talk. I don't want y'all representing me. We need parallel communities. And I'm here to declare the first one is the anti one. The Aborigine Nation for the Americans of West Indies. This is gonna be one separate community here in America. And we're gonna start working. If y'all wanna participate in government or whatever, we gonna start trying to find people of a certain mindset that we put in, the, in office. Because we can't rely on these people. And start from the local level. Stop trying to do everything on the federal level first. Start on the local level. Start in your township, in your little city. But it really starts with community. We need to start breaking off first within the community. We need to start organizing wherever, whatever cities we in, we need to start organizing with like minds and start building little enclave communities. They're gonna be virtual at first, but within five years, we can have them physical. It don't take long if you make moves. If you be like me and be about something, we can do this stuff. But if you wanna be this kind of person, we ain't nothing gonna change. If all you want to do is sit around and cry and moan and, and, and complain all day, nothing is going to change. But if you like me, you be about something, we can make moves. We need to start getting little on, enclave communities. We first, and we need to establish that it's not about knowing everything because these people have wiped out more history than we can ever learn about. Secondly, if the original man never kept chronological history, we never had a need for it. We existed since existence existed. We were here at the beginning of beginnings as far as life is concerned. We've always been here since here has been here. So we never had a need for history because what is history to, to, the, to the person that's always existed? We don't have history, we have stories. And that's what you see on the walls of the pyramids. Those are stories being told. That's what you see in books like the Gita, the Torah, the Injil. These are stories. The Kabbalah, the Quran. These are stories. In Taoism, these are stories. We have stories, but we don't have history. His story. We just have stories. History is his story. 
So we need to establish that it's not about knowing everything because we can't. We've been here too long. We never kept chronological histories and, and, and we never know everything. But what we do know is what we do know. We do know that we are global people. We do know this is our homeland. And we do know that that devil can't be trusted with nothing he says. We do know that. How do you explain the fact that blacks have fought in every war over here? The Spanish-American war, the, the war for the territories, civil war, I mean, every war. If we chattel slave, what the hell are we doing fighting? How do you explain that the original money from the South and the Confederate States all had black people on the Confederate money? That black people ran the South. How do you explain all that? You see, the problem is, man, we too easy to forget. And it don't take long to rewrite people's history. A good generation or two, you can change things. You could change a lot, especially if you get one generation to buy into it while they're young, indoctrinate them their whole lives, then they teach their children and indoctrinate them their whole lives. By the time the next set of children come, they have no idea how it was just two generations ago. Because their own grandparents bought into the lie and ignored everything. It's easy. Like this lady, the old coon lady that pushed to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. Juneteenth ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. That's a Texas thing, man. Why we let this lady push this, shove this down our throat to make that a national holiday for all blacks? Now, we got to be sitting around here talking about white folks about Juneteenth. I mean, I don't know nothing about no Juneteenth. That got nothing to do with me. I never even heard of Juneteenth, man, until I was doing time in Texas. And by the time I got out of prison, the thing had spread like a plague. They started having little festivals all over the South. And now you got this 90-some-year-old lady back down, I don't know if she's still around, that finally, with the, every year she would push to try to make it a federal holiday. That was her motion. But guess what? That old lady was college educated also. And she was old enough to know damn well that her family wasn't slaves. She was old enough to know her grandmother at least to know that they wasn't slaves. That lady was older than my grandmother. Which means she was born in like the 1920s or something. Which means her grandparents were born in the mid to late 1800s. Which means her grandparents would have known their grandparents and they at least told them her mom or her directly about the history. They didn't have no slave history. When they asked that family that repurchased that house in Virginia. Well, you know, did anybody ever say anything about your family being slaves in there? No. Some of them people are old. None of your grandparents were No. So you know what the blacks in the media say, but well, they might have been too ashamed to mention it. If that's our heritage so much, if y'all shove this down our throat, what is there to be ashamed of? Y'all force feed it to a 24 seven. They was never told of slavery in their family because their family was never slaves. That's y'all with that. You educated Negroes with that stuff. And I'm tired. I'm tired of defending myself against y'all, man. Y'all don't represent me. And I need to try to figure out a way to make this stuff official. And for all you blacks that may not be sure, you may think, well, I mean, you know, it might be true, might not be true. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I kind of believe what they say. I mean, that's on you. But if you believe what they say just because they say, I don't want you either in our community. And don't tell me you did no investigation, you did no research because you lying. Because you ain't gonna do no research that's gonna show that your family came from Africa. Not, not 90% of y'all, not 95% of y'all. You might have one person here or there that can do that. 95, 98% of y'all can't do that because it's not true. Your family did not come in from, from, as, from Africa as slaves. So if you tell me you did research and you tracked it down, you lying. I know you lying, I don't want you around me. Because if you're willing to lie on your ancestors, just to fall in line with white supremacy, you are not a black person I want around me. Do your research. Do your own research. 
You got all kinds of family tree stuff right now online. Do your research. And don't tell me, well, I traced our family back to this, to this land that where white folks at right now, so I guess that's where we were slaves. No, y'all own that land. They took it from y'all. That's your family's land. Stop assuming the worst. When you should be assuming the worst. They took it from you. But when your foundation is that you are that you are foreigner to this land, you try to make sense out of everything by automatically making it fit that narrative. When it don't, accept exactly what you see. Don't assume nothing. If it don't directly say y'all were slaves, y'all were not slaves. Period. Because they took, according to what they say, they kept meticulous records. Yeah, we don't find no records nowhere. We don't find no records nowhere, but they suppose that took, kept meticulous records of the slave, but we don't have no records nowhere. And you came with, I mean, you know, I don't want to get too far into it, but I mean, if they were to show you a piece of paper, first of all, if your family and ancestors are outside of the 13 colonies, then anything they say concerning the people of the 13 colonies already have nothing to do with you. So when they talk about all this history in the 1700s, we wasn't even a part of America in the 1700s. Where I'm from wasn't even part of it. When they talk about the early 1800s, where I'm from wasn't even a part of America in the early 1800s. None of that history matters. What happened in 1600, 1619, where most of us are from, wasn't even a part of the colonies in 1619. We have nothing to do with whatever history that take place there. Nothing to do with it. Y'all don't understand that the country as it is today is not the same country as it was back then. We were dealing with the French and the Spanish and the Portuguese all throughout the Americas. We wasn't dealing with the British. The British was on the far east coast. We wasn't dealing with them. Eventually, this whole thing became a British colony, but initially it wasn't. But y'all make sense out of everything by trying to make it fit into the paradigm that they gave you. You're not my brother if you think like that. You're not my sister if you think like that. So my thing is this. We need parallel communities. We need to split. And then we need to start figuring out a way to get proper representation of us. Because these people do not represent us and it's time for us to stop letting them talk for us. It's time for us to stop letting them misrepresent our wishes, our, our desires, what we want. This is crazy. First of all, it's crazy that we have a country this size and our federal government is less than 500 people in it that talk for all of us. How in the heck do they know what we want? What American people want? That's crazy. You don't know what the hell every American want, man. They tell us what we want and like fools, we go along with it. Whether you white, black, or whatever, you go along with it. Nah, man, it, it, that gotta end. It's time for parallel communities. And eventually, we need to get whole independent enclaves within this thing, man, because that's the ultimate goal. Parallel communities first, then parallel societies second. We need independent societies, man. We need to break off from this madness. That is the ultimate goal. Now, you tell me, uh, I can't think of the dude named Am, Am is something. The dude that uh, accused me of being the kind of dude our enemies like. You tell me if that message sound like the kind of message our enemies would like. I don't think so. I ain't the sellout, my brother. Your leaders are. The people you worship are. The people you follow are. I ain't the sellout. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm out of here, Brother Kush, aka the Black Elf. So long.